Glory, glory, glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're back on. <laughs> I lost that transmission for a minute, that connection, but you can invite your friends, invite people. God bless you. Thank you for coming back. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, thank you for coming back. Thank you for watching. I want to, I mean, I apologize for that break in um, the transmission of that broadcast. So we're going to continue. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God on how you can have all your needs met. And... Um, I'm sharing with you from God's word on what it takes to have all your needs met because God wants to meet all your needs. God wants to meet all your needs. You can have all your needs met if you cultivate a relationship with God, a shepherd and a sheep relationship with God. If you can cultivate a shepherd and a sheep relationship with God, you can have all your needs met. And I'm sharing with you from the, from the scriptures from Psalm 23 and verse 1, the psalmist gave us the secret. The psalmist said in the word of God, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, I have all my needs met. So I'm speaking to you that when you make God your shepherd, when you position yourself as a sheep to make God your shepherd, it will have all your needs met. And I began to show you from the word of God that when God becomes your shepherd, God will assume the responsibility for your life. God will take, God will assume responsibility for all that you need. And that's what God wants to do. And that's the best place and that's the best position we can have ourselves. And the Bible says, don't forget, I, there was a disconnection. So if you missed that, I'm, I'm just trying to kick off from where I stopped. And I'm trying to get you to follow what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, if there are things you want to have in your life, if there are places you want to go, if there are things you want to become in your life, the goal of the shepherd is to lead the sheep. And one of the definition or one of the description of being led, it means somebody to accompany you to bring you to the place where you want to go, to take you to the place where you want to go. So God wants to accomplish, accompany you. God wants to accompany us. God wants to take us to places where we want to go. So if we allow God to take us to where we want to go, then we will get to where we want to get to in life. We will see our dreams fulfilled. We will see our goals accomplished. In fact, there are many things in our lives which we can't attend to in our own strength, except we are led by God. Glory be to God. I want you to help me to share this um, broadcast on your timeline because I'm trying to get you to bring all the followers and those who missed, those who were logged out because of the bad connection we had earlier on. I want you to bring them back on. Help me share this on your timeline or, you know, while I do that here too also, so we can have many more people enjoy what God is doing in our lives. So share this, share, I want you to share it on your timeline. Bring your followers, 
bring you know bring your friends and your and your friends and your family let them know that god is blessing his people as i get to share it here let me attempt to share it here so that we can have all those who God dropped off, I want them back. So I want you to do that. If you have not done that yet, just share it. It doesn't take a minute for you to share. God will bless you as you do that. Share this on your time. And I'm going to continue this uh, message with you in a minute as I'm trying to share it on this uh, system also so we can have, you know, more people enjoy what God is doing because there's a, there's a miracle with God's people. You know, God, God wants to help his people. That's why he has sent me to bring the good news of God's help, God's provision, God's direction to his people. Glory be to God. All right. I'm seeing this on my timeline. Now, let me, let me locate it. I want to share this on my, I can't share it on the system I'm using, so I want to use this other system to share it. So please share it as if you can see, if you see the share button, just click the share button and share this on your timeline. Share it right now. I want to share it on my, uh, Timeline, glory be to God. How do I get here now? Okay. You know, when the connection goes bad, God bless you. I want you to share this on your timeline. We want, we're going to continue the message. I want to be able to do that, but I want you to share it on your timeline. Bring your followers on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for doing that. If you're doing that already, thank you for doing that. Um, okay. All right. I think I'll be able to do that in a minute. Okay. Share. Share this. All right, so God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I want you to share it if you are on. Share it on, share it on your groups. Share it to the groups. Share it to your friends. Let them know we are on. I'm going to continue. Okay, thank you, Lord. I'm sharing it right now. I've been able to finally find the button to do that. So share it. We're going to continue this powerful miracle teaching because all your needs are going to be met. God's going to grant your desire. We had a bad um, connection, but thank God, you know, there are many ways that God has given us the options to do what we need to do. So I'm glad we're back on. So I want you to share it. I'm just sharing it. On I'm talking about cultivating a sheep and a shepherd relationship with Jesus, with God. That, that, that's the solution that Jesus gave to us concerning having all our needs met. In fact, when Jesus identified the problem of man, he said they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He said the whole problem of man is because they were scattered, they fainted, they were like sheep having no shepherd. And I'm sharing with you the role of a shepherd in the life of a sheep. The role of a shepherd in the life of a sheep. And the shepherd is to guide the sheep. So share this on your timeline. If you can hear me loud and clear, glory to God. Let me know you are on. Let me know you are sharing this. Very, very important. It says, God gave the word. Great is the company of them that publish it. So I want you to do that. I'm sharing it with uh, my followers because we had a bad connection. And I'm going to get back in the word in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I believe that is done. I believe that is done. All right. Praise God. So welcome back. I'm sharing with you on how you can have all your needs. Man, if God is your shepherd, there are some things that God will do in your life, in my life, that as a shepherd, this is the role of a shepherd in the life of a sheep. What are the things that God will do? He said, he will lead me in the paths. And I love that. He said, he will lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So there are paths we need to walk in. But we don't know the path. You know, as we live in this world, it seems as if we are blind to some things. We are blind to some realities. We are blind to some provision. We are blind to some truth. That is a reality lead you. He will lead you in the path that you have not known. In fact, I was in Isaiah 42 verse 16. He said, I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. I will lead them in the path they have not known. I will bring the blind in a way that they knew not. So there is a way 
there is a way to go. There is a way to actualizing your dreams with God. There is a way to experiencing the, the, the fulfillment of your goals with God. There is a way to healing with God. There's a way with God. There's always a way. Whatever you desire in life, whatever you want, whatever you want to have, there is a way to it. But because you don't know the way, and if you don't have a guide, if you don't have someone leading you to the way, to the place, then you might continue to go around in circles and never really get there. And I was speaking to you, I said, there are things that are standing as barriers to us, which if God leads us, we can walk into the miracle. When the, when the Lord brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, the Bible says there was a red sea confronting them and there was a road beside the red sea, but God led them in the midst of the Red Sea. Why? Because God has already made a way for them in the midst of the Red Sea, not to drown them, but to drown their enemies. So, and you can see that was the key to their victory. That was how they experienced the mighty deliverance that Egypt, that the, the Egyptians that were pursuing them could no longer you know, catch up with them or take them back to captivity. Why? Because God was the one leading them. So in the midst of the sea, there was a way. So if God is your shepherd, he said, I will bring the blind by the way they know not. So there is a way with God. There is a way to blessing. There's a way to breakthrough. There's a way to victory. If you allow God to lead you, that means if you assume the position of a sheep, then God will lead you. He will lead you through difficult terrains and you're going to have the victory that your heart so desire. He said, I will lead them in the path they have not known. So that's why this is very important. You see, the path you have not known is the path that will take you to the unknown in your life, the things you crave for. The, the, thing, the dreams you have, the goals you want to accomplish, there is a path that you and I have not known that God will lead us. So when God is your shepherd, the role of the shepherd is to lead you in the path you have not known. He said, I will even make darkness light before them. The things that becloud you, the things that are darkness, the things that are in the dark that you can't see. God says, I will make darkness light before them. And the crooked things will be made straight. If God is your shepherd, the things that seem crooked in your life, the things that are confusing, the things that make the mind to become dizzy and hazy, God says, I will make them straight. So you see, there's a blessing in making God our shepherd. That's how you're going to have your needs met. And I gave us, I gave us an illustration. I said, we are, we could be concerned about too many things like Martha in scriptures. She was doing too many things, but the most important thing was the thing she left out. And the ways of God are very, very easy and simple. And they're the most profound ways we can find. When you find God, you're going to find life. When you find God, you're going to find blessing. When you find God, you're going to have all your needs met. He said, I will make the crooked things straight before them. So when God is leading you, you will no longer lack. That is very profound. When God is leading you, he will lead you. He will order your steps. He will direct your path. He will lead you to where your miracles are. He will lead you to where your blessings are are located in Isaiah 48, in Isaiah 48, verse 21. Look at the very powerful scripture here, Isaiah 48, 21. It said, when he led the children of Israel, they tasted not when he led them through the desert. You see, they were going through the desert and they were not thirsty. Why? Because the one leading them through the desert was the one that was providing for their test. So it is not what we go through that actually bring the difficulties in our lives. You know, a whole lot of people say, I'm going through, a, through the wilderness, I'm going through the desert. That's not the problem. The problem or, is while you are going through the desert, are you being led? Are you following the shepherd? Is the shepherd leading you? Because 
even though you go through the, through the desert, if the shepherd is leading you, you will not test. Why? Because he said, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He caused the water. He caused the water. He made the water. He made the rock, I beg your pardon, to flow out of the rock. He made the water to flow out of the rock for them because he was the one leading them. When God is leading you, you're going to enjoy supernatural provision. That's the miracle life of a sheep. One of the, um, one of the most you know, blessed animals among all animals is the sheep. The sheep has no strength of its own. The sheep doesn't even have what it takes to watch out for itself. But because the sheep is being watched or being guided or being led by a shepherd, the sheep always enjoys providence. It enjoys protection. It enjoys direction. It enjoys speed. It enjoys supernatural provision. Why? Because as long as the sheep is led by the shepherd, the sheep is well taken care of. In fact, it's amazing that the sheep doesn't fight its own battles. The sheep doesn't fight its battles because the shepherd fights for the sheep. You know, and that's the blessed life that God is calling you for. A life whereby you will have him taking care of you. You will have him protecting you. You know, David was a shepherd. David said, when I was taking care of my father's sheep, he said, the lion came against the sheep, but I went after the lion. The bear came against the, the sheep. I went after the, the, the shepherd. We always go after everything that is against the life of the sheep. That's why when we make God our shepherd, when we recognize God as our, as our shepherd, and when we, continue, when we allow ourselves to flow as the sheep of his pasture, then we're going to experience his protection. We're going to experience his provision, his leading. Look at what he says here. He said, he caused the water to flow out of the rock for them. He cleared the rock also. And the waters gushed out. That's supernatural provision in the desert. Supernatural provision in the wilderness. Because the Lord was their shepherd, he caused the water, he caused the, he cleaved the rock for them, and the water gushed out. What I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God is how you can experience comfort in the midst of distress. How you can experience provision in the midst of scarcity how you can experience abundance in the midst of lack, how you can experience divine health in the midst of sickness. When God is your shepherd, then he's going to ensure that you are catered for, you are provided for, and that's the relationship. So, but you, God cannot be your shepherd if you are not willing to be a sheep. We must be willing to position ourselves as the sheep of his pasture. So the how do you enjoy leading? If God is leading you, you must be willing to follow. You see, a whole lot of us want to go ahead of things, want to go ahead into things, but no, we need to position ourselves in such a way that we can follow his leading. We can follow his leading. You know, I love the scripture in Psalm, Psalm 1. The Bible says, blessed is the man, happy is the man, Fortunate is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That means he's not led by un ungodly counsel. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the sinners. So if you want God, if you want to experience the blessing, if you want to be an envy of your world, then allow God to be your counselor, to be the one to lead you. He said, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit, nor standeth in the ways of the sinners, nor seated in the seat of this comfort. He said, but his delight is in the law of the law. So in the leading, 
if you he say is the light is in the leading the law of the lord is the the leading of god that's what will is he said and if you meditate in the leading the leading of god he said you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that is very powerful a tree planted by the rivers of water will enjoy nourishment a tree planted by the rivers of water will bring forth his fruit on a regular basis it will always be fruitful so being led by god is just like becoming a tree planted by the rivers of water your leaf also will not wither there's not going to be failure around your life there's not going to be failure around your life no matter the challenges no matter the the difficulties no matter the obstacles that may confront you with god as your shepherd you will always come out with victory with god as your shepherd you will always come out victoriously you will always triumph he says his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. <laughs> whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. So whatsoever you do, you will prosper in it. You will excel in it. You will succeed in it as long as you are led by God, as long as you are guided by God, as long as you are instructed by God, there are great benefits to God being our shepherd. I'm praying in my heart, I'm praying in my spirit that you will come into this revelation where you will, where you will position yourself as a sheep and allow God to be your shepherd. Don't be without a guide in this wicked world. Don't be without a guide. Don't be without a lead. Don't be without a guide. Don't allow yourself to live without being led by God. In fact, if there is one prayer you want to pray, if there's one desire you want to have, it's, Lord, I want you to be my shepherd. I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me. I want you to show me the way. I want you to lead me on the right path. You know, that, oh my God, I'm trusting God that your story will change that you will begin to experience ease in your life. You begin to find, you know, water out of your rock. You begin to find solution in places where people don't know that there are solutions. So look at this, look at this. When God is your shepherd, this is, this is a great advantage for our lives. And I'm trusting God that it will become the advantage of your life. Let me read another scripture. Let me show you another benefit. I'm trying to show you by the Spirit of God because I want you to begin to desire in your heart to, for God to be your shepherd. It's something that you have to do. God will not force himself as a shepherd, but you see one of the things about the sheep, the sheep always submits to the leadership or the leading of the shepherd. That's what the, that's what the sheep does. The sheep always submits itself to the leading of the shepherd. So that's what we need to do, to come to that place of submission where we can, you know, acknowledge and come to a place of submission and say, Lord, I recognize that, look, I cannot lead my, I cannot lead myself. I want you to lead me. I want you to be my shepherd. That's the, that's, that was the confession of David. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I want you to say that to yourself. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not the one leading myself. The Lord, my shepherd, is leading me. Oh, yes. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. So that is a decision you have to make. And I trust God that you will make that decision. Look at what the shepherd will do. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 9, it said, for the Lord, for the lost portion is his people. It said, Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. Look at verse 10, now very powerful. I want you to hear this. He said, he found him in a desert land in the west holy wilderness he led him about he instructed him he kept him as the apple of his eyes so when god is your shepherd 
He will lead you about. How does God lead you about? By instructing you. And when God is instructing you, look at the blessing here, you will be like the apple of his eyes because his eyes will be on you. His eyes will be on you, monitoring you, watching you. You know, I see a whole lot of things, you know, people, you know, you know, people always emulate the ways of God. For instance, now, if you take a ride, I think, I think it works with the Uber ride, you know, not giving them publicity, but if you take an Uber ride and you want somebody to know, to monitor you, all you need to do is just to share your ride and they're going to begin to see where you are and they're going to monitor your part to see where you are, how the driver is going and all that. But that's exactly what God does for those whom he's leading. When God is leading you, he's watching over you as the apple of his eyes. When Jesus was in his earthly ministry, there was a time he told the disciples, he said they should go to the other side. And he went to the top of the mountain to pray. As he went to the top of the mountain to pray, the Bible says while they were on the, on the sea, there was a great roaring of the waves and the sea against their voyage. But Jesus, who told them to go to the other side, saw them. And while the storm was threatening them, Jesus walked on the storm to meet his disciple. That is a kind of protection that we get when God is our shepherd. There is nothing that will happen to you that God will not be conscious of because you have registered yourself as his sheep. And look at the next thing here. I'm reading Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. He said, as an eagle stared up her nest, fluttered over her young, spreaded her wings, taken them, he said, bear them on her wings. He said, so the Lord did lead him. There was no strange God with him. That's another very powerful revelation there. When God is your shepherd, there will not be any strange God. You know why? You know what? Strange God are other things that could lead you, that could lead a person. Those are strange gods. And, when, you know, and God is a very jealous God. If there are strange gods leading a person, then God will not lead you. If you are led by your personal selfish desires, if you are led by your flesh, if you are led by other motives, then God will not be able to lead you. But if you allow God to lead you, then God will take the place of all those things. But look at the blessings in verse 13. He said, when God is leading you, he will make you to ride upon the high places of the earth. Oh, makayaba yabalaba. That is very powerful. Deuteronomy chapter number 32 and verse 13. He said, as long as God is leading you, you will ride on the high places of the earth. That means you will go high in life. You will fly high. You will be above principalities above situation, you will be a high flyer. That's the benefit. He will make you to write. You will no longer walk in low places. I see you, you know, allowing God, allowing yourself and position yourself for God to be your shepherd. You will write upon your high places and that he might eat the increase of the field. Oh, katalamasa talabaha. This is very powerful. Oh, glory to God, my Lord. You will eat the increase of the field. There is increase in your field. No wonder the Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. There is good in your land. There is good in your future. There is good around you. Just allow God to lead you. If you make God your shepherd, you will eat the increase of the field. The field has increased. Whatever field, field could be your profession, your career. It could be your relationship. It could be your business. It could be your job. There is increase in whatever has to do with your field, whatever your field of endeavor is, or whatever field of life you find yourself. But the way to eat the increase of the field is when God is your shepherd. And that is the blessing. 
He said, you would, and you shall eat the increase of the field. He said, he made him to suck honey out of the rock. <laughs> Sweetness coming out of hard places. He made him, when God is our shepherd, he will make us to suck honey out of the rock. Oh, I want to prophesy that your rock will pour honey to you. You will suck honey out of the rock. Out of the hard places of life, you will experience the good thing. You know, I think it was Samson that said, out of the eater came something to eat. A lion came to eat to, to devour the life of Samson. And Samson slew the lion. And by the next time he was passing by, he saw that the, the, the bees had made their heave in the in the carcass of the lion so he took out of the honey that was in that lion's carcass and he licked it and he took some and took for his family for his friend what was he doing he was sucking hot honey out of the rock if god you see this is a supernatural life this is a spectacular life this is a miracle life if god is your shepherd you see there are there are people who have made God their shepherd. And when God is your shepherd, you're going to begin to see life. You're going to begin to enjoy the good things of life because God will lead you in the midst of the rock. He said it, it caused him to suck honey out of the rock. It's not that there won't be rock. It's not that there won't be hardness or there won't be challenges, but there's going to be victory in every challenge, in every hardship. You're going to have testimony. When God, you see, people, the situation that people go through is always parallel and similar to each other. But how they come out is what makes the difference. That's the point the Holy Spirit is making. We all face situations, we all face challenges. But how we come out of it is what makes the difference. He said, so that means there will be, uh, there will be rock, but you can suck honey out of the rock. And he said, oil out of the flinty rock. So in the midst of hardness, you can begin to experience ease and the flow of supernatural supply. The oil out of the flinty rock is the anointing of God. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. In the midst of it, in the midst of hardness, is the anointing that makes the difference. The anointing breaks the yoke. But the Lord will anoint you. If the Lord is your shepherd, that means the anointing is the supernatural enablement of God that comes upon the life of a person that causes him or helps him or enables him to experience ease in difficult places. I'm going to be praying with you. I'm going to be praying with you before this broadcast is over. And I'm going to be praying that you're going to experience this wonderful things. He said, you're going to eat the butter of kine, the milk of sheep. You're going to eat the fat of lambs, the rams of the, bre the, the breed of Basham and of goats, the fat of kidneys, and thou shalt drink the pure blood of grape. This is talking about healthy meals, healthy meals, healthy meals. There are some healthy meals that can make not only your body, it can make your mind healthy. It can make your spirit healthy. It can make your body healthy. So when God is leading you, there's going to be health. You see, sickness has been, you know, a whole lot of people who are sick. It's been said that people are sick, not because of, you know, uh, the infirmity, but mainly because of the kind of thoughts they have. You know, doctors, there's this research that was that very real, that people are sick because of the things going through their mind, their, their mind, their system. But God, when God is leading you, you're going to begin to enjoy, you know, things going through your system because the, your, you, your mind is going to be at peace. You're going to be at peace. You're going to enjoy the peace of God. I'm going to enjoy this supernatural provision of God that he will bring your way. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Glory be to God. You see, when God leads, he's going to give speed. There was, there was a man in scripture, and I want to pray. I'm going to pray as I share this with you. I'm going to pray with you. I want to pray with you today. I want to pray with you. Listen to this. Before I share this next, uh, because I want to show you how you can gain speed, how you can gain speed. How you can move, how you can gain speed, how, how you can walk with speed of accomplishment. You know, 
uh, that's what happened to the servant of Abraham. The Bible says the Lord gave him speed. He had great speed in his life because God led him. God, you see, if you have, if you, if you, if you have situations in your life, if you have, you know, uh, important assignment of your life, you need speed. And the way to gain speed is to allow God to lead you. Look at Genesis 24. Genesis 24. In Genesis 24, there is a revelation here of the servant of Abraham. The Bible says, look at his testimony. I'm going to read his testimony, and I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray with you. He said, blessed, and he said, blessed be the Lord God of my father, um, of my master Abraham, who has not left, who has not left me destitute of his mercy. He said, I be in the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. He had an assignment from his master, but he prayed that God would lead him, that God would give him speed. He was supposed to go and find a wife for Isaac, Abraham's son. But he prayed and said, God, lead me. Give me good speed. And the Bible says God answered his prayer with precision. And the man had a testimony. He said, the Lord led me to where my blessings are. Do you have an important assignment in your life that you are thinking it is impossible? Because he went to a city. Imagine somebody going to a new city, which he didn't know nobody, and he was looking for his master's relative to be able to find a wife for his master's son. Look at how it was like a mission impossible. But with the leading of God, the mission impossible was the mission easy was the mission that was done with speed. And I want to believe God that whatever mission of your life you may have, it will happen with ease for you. It will happen with precision. God will order your steps and God will lead you. All right. I'm going to pray that that miracle will happen in your life. You know, one of the reasons people have suffered difficulties in life is because they've not been diligent to divine instruction. They've not followed the leading of God. God said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He said, don't be like the horse. Don't be like the mule who have no understanding. So it is lack of understanding that make people to struggle. But God does not want you to struggle. God wants you to enjoy his leading. Glory be to God. Oh, I'm going to pray with you right now. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will be your shepherd, that you begin to enjoy the guidance of God that you begin to hear his voice, that you, you'll be able to assume in your life the position of a sheep. As I'm speaking to you, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not ashamed to be a sheep of God. Somebody once said to me, you don't, don't you have a mind of your own? I said, no, I don't. Everything I want to do, I want God's guidance. I want God to lead me. I want God to lead me in the path I have not known. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. It says, but the ends are the ways of death. But when God is guiding you, I, I, I have sucked honey out of the rock. I can tell you that. I have, I'm riding upon the high places that God has ordained for me. Because I keep positioning myself as a shepherd. One of the ways you do that is to make sure you you, you ask God. Don't just assume that God will be your shepherd. Say it like the, confess like the psalmist declared, the Lord is my shepherd. Say, Lord, I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me. I want you to instruct me. I want you to be the one ordering my steps, instructing me, telling me what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't want to assume I know what to do. You know, there are times I have thought I knew what to do. And I found out that in my assumption, I have found out that even though in the, in the natural, they look right, I found out that they've always ended up wrong. But I found out at times when I didn't know what to do, and I followed the leading of God, it has led me to spectacular places in my life. And I'm trusting God that you will enjoy the same guidance, that you will walk upon your high places, you will suck honey out of the rock, that the waters will come out of the rock in your wilderness, that God will provide for you. That's my prayer. That's what I'm praying for you, that God will be your shepherd in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I pray for this person watching me today that Lord, oh God, you will grant this person humility of heart, submission in his or her spirit, 
to be able to acknowledge you, O oh God, even right now, because you have brought this timely word into the life of your son, your daughter, so that, Lord, they might experience the blessing that you have provided. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, O oh God, they'll begin to experience your guidance. They'll begin to experience your leading, that you begin to accompany these ones. I pray, O oh God, that the things that were obstacles and barriers before their path are removed right now in the name of Jesus. The same way you parted the Red Sea, even though they were, the children of Israel were chased by the Egyptians, and you led the children of Israel to walk through the dry ground. Let your children walk through dry ground in the name of Jesus. Let anything pursuing their destiny be drowned today in the name of Jesus. I decree victory. I decree that the enemies of their life, oh God, are drowned. Whatever barrier, whatever difficulties they have had, let there be solution. Let them hear your voice today, oh God. You said your sheep hear your voice. I come against every spiritual deafness. I pray, oh God, that the ears of their spirit is open right now to be able to receive from you. Begin to hear the voice of God. Begin to receive direction from the Spirit of God. Begin to be led by the Spirit of God. Begin to walk in your high places. Begin to experience peace in your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise, O God, and I call it done in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Congratulations, my friend, that is breakthrough for you. There's miracle for you. There's miracle in your life. Oh, yes. And in case you are watching me and you have not even made Jesus the Lord of your life, one of the ways you can enjoy his guidance is to submit yourself and to be born again, to make Jesus the Lord of your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he, has, he died for your sin and he rose again for your justification, you will be saved. So I want to pray with you. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, just say this simple prayer with me right where you are, and you're going to be born again. I'm going to be a child of God, and the Spirit of God is going to lead you. This is not about religion. This is a relationship you are cultivating with God. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for dying for my sins. I believe you died for me, Lord Jesus, and that you rose again for my justification. So today, I open my heart, and I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my heart and be my savior. Be my guide. Lead me from today. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want to congratulate you. You just got born again. A new life has been given to you. It's going to be the best life you've ever lived. You've traded in your old life. God has given you a new life. Now you have the life of God. What you can do is, number one, I want you to read this read the scripture, read the book of John, start reading the book of John, it will be a blessing to you. The gospel according to St. John, if you go to the Bible, get the Bible, read it. And also, if you want to send me an inbox, send me an send me inbox, me, let me know you pray that prayer. I can send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you. Or if you want to go to our website, that website is hoffan.org. I want you to send me uh, a message you know, email message, let me know you said that prayer. I can send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you. And I also let help you to find a Bible-believing Bible church in your location, wherever you are. I want to send some materials to you that will be a blessing and help you to find a church where you can grow. And if you're in the Atlanta metro area in the USA, I want you to come and worship God with us at the Household of Faith for All Nations. We're going to love on you. We're going to help you to grow in your work with God. So go to our website. That website is Hoffman.org, you're going to get the uh, location to our service so it can be a part of our service. And God will bless you as you come. Amen. Before I go today, I want to give you an opportunity to partner with this ministry and also to be blessed by God. One of the ways you're going to partner with us is to sow into this ministry, to sow your financial seed. Your financial seed will help us to continue to do the work of God. Jesus, the Bible says, if we sow unto you spiritual things, we ought to reap your kind of things. So as we bring God's word to you, as I bring the word of God to you, it's necessary for me also to reap of your kind of things. That's how God has ordained it. It's a day that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So I want you to give into this ministry. I want you to plant your financial seed. Every offering you give will help us to continue to do the work that God has called us to do. You know, a whole lot of us gave up everything to do this work. So God will use us to bring the word of nourishment to you so you can grow in your faith. And God also will use you 
to support this work with your own financial seed, with your giving, with your offering. So I want you to give a good offering today. You can go to our website. Anywhere you are in the world is a, is an acceptable platform. Every seed you sow will multiply back to you by God. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will God cause men to give to your bosom? So that's how you follow the prompting of God. Allow God to lead you today to sow into the good ground of this ministry. You're going you're gonna to be blessed. Every seed you sow is going to be multiplied back to you as harvest. And every seed you sow will bruise the head of the serpent. And by every seed you sow will help us to continue to do the work that God has called us to do. So for every soul we reach, every harvest we have, God will also bless you. So I want you to do that today. I want you to go to our website. That website is hoffan.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org, H O. F as in Frank, FFAN.org, and plant your financial seed. As you sow that seed, you're going to receive harvest back into your life, and God will bless you. Thank you so much for partnering with us. And if you sow your seed, God will bless you and multiply the seed sown back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. I want you to continue to share this on your timeline. And before I go, I want to invite you to be part of our anniversary convention. Glory to God. Let me give you this special invitation. Our, our church anniversary convention is from June the 21st through the 23rd. June the 21st through the 23rd. If you go to our website, hoffan.org, you're going to get the information to our anniversary convention. This is a free event. And I want, God has been good to us as a ministry. We're celebrating our 14th anniversary convention from June the 21st through the 23rd. And the theme for this convention is power to move mountains. God will be empowering you to move mountains. What are mountains, barriers, obstacles, whatever is standing on your way of progress and success, God will move them out of your way so that you can accomplish God's purpose for your life. So go to our website, get the information, and also spread the news, be a part of it, and it's going to be a blessing. June the 21st through the 23rd, mark your calendar and don't miss it for anything. And don't forget to get my books. I advertised my book in the other uh, broadcast. Uh, before it got cut off. So if you want to get my books, uh, Amazon.com, go there, you're going to get my books. All these books are available on Amazon.com. Go get a copy. There'll be a blessing to you. Amen. Lots of books there that will bless your soul and bless your heart. So go get them. There'll be a blessing to your life. Glory be to God. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, my wife, for itemizing all these points that we have on. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. So you can watch the other broadcast, the one before this, and you can continue to enjoy God as your shepherd. I'm going to I'll be with you next week and uh, next time. I, pro I broadcast every Tuesday, 3.30 uh, p.m. Eastern and 8.30 p.m. Um, GMT. So be a part of this broadcast. It's going to be a blessing. I thank God for your life, and I want to hear your testimony. Please share your testimony with me. Let me know what God is doing in your life, all right? This is Bishop O. Olafe signing out. Until I come your way again next time, uh, I want you to stay empowered. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Shalom. God bless you.